In this video, we want to see how we actually make inheritance happen in Scala code. So to do this, we're going to create another inheritance hierarchy, and it's going to start off with a class called shape. And this is a fairly standard example to use. So shape is our super type. If I were making a UML class diagram, shape would be up at the top, and I have a few methods that I want to put in my shape. The methods that should go in shape should be methods that you can, you should be able to do for absolutely any shape. For example, every shape has an area, and I'm going to make my area be a double. It's a numeric value. We'll start off by just saying it's zero. We'll also have a perimeter, which will also be a double. And I will also start off saying that is zero. Um, maybe I'd be able to draw my shapes. Now, we're gonna use something that we haven't seen yet in this video series, but later on, we'll get the capability of actually being able to draw. For now, we will just have a graphics context. Okay. This one returns unit, so I won't put anything there. In order to make this happy, I will need to add something to the build path. We'll see this again. It's an important thing for us to be able to do. And I want to add an external jar. I think this one should be happy. It has the graphics context. It makes our code compile. We'll come back later in a future uh, video series and actually learn about Scala FX and how we can do GUIs and graphics. So these are some methods that I would expect a shape to be able to do, but obviously I can't put very intelligent implementations of them in here. So what are some subtypes of shape? Well, some ones that are easy for me to include are things like rectangle and circle. So let's go ahead and let's create those. I'm going to make another class. I'm going to call it rectangle. And this is where we're going to start making actual inheritance happen. So to have inheritance, I'm going to say that my rectangle extends shape. So this is the keyword extends is what tells Scala that we want rectangle to be a subtype of shape. And that way we can write code that uses a shape and now it will be able to use a rectangle. Now you can tell from at this point already this code is happy in the sense that it it works. You know, it, it well, it seems to compile. It's interesting to ask the question, well, what would happen if we made a little application here? So let's make an object for shape and let's put main inside of it. And I'm going to also put another meth method inside of here. I'm going to, um, we'll call it print shape data. And we're going to pass in a shape. I'm just going to print some information here so it doesn't actually, uh, doesn't actually return anything to us. And I'll just say that, let's see area equals s dot area and perimeter equals s dot perimeter and then I can't spell there and I, yeah, okay. And the interesting question right now is, well, wh what happens if I, if I were to call this, if I were to call print shape data, and we'll pass in a rectangle. Let's make one. Rect equals new rectangle. Well, this is going to pass a rectangle into here and it's going to call area on that rectangle. 
rectangle doesn't have an area inside of it. Well, it turns out that inheritance provides two things to us. One is code reuse. So everything that I write inside of shape, as soon as rectangle says it extends shape, it gets a copy of all of them. And the other one is subtyping. Now, when inheritance was first created, it was actually kind of considered that that code reuse, the getting the code from the parent class, that was the important part because people thought, hey, well now I don't have to write this. It turns out that that's actually something you often don't use. We'll see how we can kind of turn that off uh, in, in a few videos. Um, instead, what you use most of the time is the ability to make it be a subtype. And here, we're actually seeing both of them. So this print shape data takes a shape. It doesn't care what type of shape it is. In just a second, we're going to make a circle, and this same function will work with both rectangles and circles. That's the subtyping power. The fact that my rectangle effectively got implementations of area perimeter and draw, even though we didn't, even though we didn't have to write it, that's the code reuse. Uh, but of course, these versions aren't very powerful. In fact, they don't do the right thing. Right now we're saying we have an area of zero and a perimeter of zero, which does kind of prove that the rectangle is using the versions that are here inside of shape, but that's not right. Okay, that's not what we want to use. How do we make it so the rectangle uses the correct ones? Well, we need to override those methods. And we do that by declaring a method with the same arguments and the same return value. Actually, the return value uh, could be a subtype of what's returned in, in the supertype. And we put this keyword override in here, which tells Scala that we really mean to be writing a new version. Well, what is the area of a rectangle? Well, that would be width times height. Hmm, unfortunately, we don't have a width and a height. Maybe we should be passing those in when we build our rectangle. So we could have val width is a double and val height is a double. And now I have an area method. <laughs> now I also have an error over here because when I made my rectangle I didn't give it a width and a height. How about we give it three and four? We can also create a perimeter override def perimeter and that is also a double and this is two times width plus height. Now if I come back to my shape over here and I run it, we get appropriate values. Three times four is 12, three plus four is seven, times two is 14. Okay, so now this code is doing the correct thing and you'll, you can see that even though we passed in a shape, so inside of here, if I hover over S, it says S is a shape. And if you look here, shapes give back zero for their area but this didn't print zero because the subtypes are allowed to override those methods, provide their own implementations. Let's just real quick create a circle and we'll do the same type of thing inside of here just to show how it would work. One thing to note here is that our draw method, because we haven't written anything in it yet, is still using the one from shape. We have not overridden the draw method. Okay, so we come into our circle. What data does a circle need? Well, it needs a radius. And we also want it to extend shape. And instead of a width and a height here, the area is two times math.pi times radius squared, which is, should be written as radius times radius. I am missing a multiply there. Okay. And then the perimeter, actually I don't want that too. The perimeter goes in the next one. Two times math.pi times radius. Two pi r and pi r squared. If we come back in here to shape, we can make val circle equals new circle. Let's say we have a radius of three and I can print shape data of our circle. And this is showing the fact that I only had to write print shape data once and it worked for both rectangles and for circles. It would technically also work for shapes, which are really boring. And if I create another shape, it will work for those. In fact, I can create an infinite number of shapes and this method works for all of them. 
That's the beauty of inclusion polymorphism. That is what subtyping provides for us.